What's going on, Husker fans? It's Ethan Vice. Uh, and this is kind of a somber day as we lost to Colorado 36 14 this weekend. That was just a devastating loss for us, but plenty of other things to look positive about. And um, that's why I'm here, right? To try to put a smile on your faces. Anyway, so yeah, that loss sucked. We'll get to that in a minute, but I just want to let you guys know, all right? There's a lot to be proud of for this university. Um, you know, been around, the university has been built in 1869 during uh, some hard times, you know, that when the state was founded, there was no trees, you know. Um, that's where Arbor Day comes in, uh, where, you know, people that moved into Nebraska plant a bunch of trees, and now you see trees all over the place in Lincoln. So, you know, uh, whenever we're going through a rough time, such as how football's going, think about that, you know. Uh, at some point, we'll rise from the ashes. We'll plant them trees. But anyway, uh, yeah, you know. Always great history to be told here at the, well, not here, I live in Kansas, but at the University of Nebraska. Lots of good things has happened, you know, over the years. And so, you know, looking back at history, you know, there, there's a lot of things to be proud of, you know, for this uh, not highly populated state, you know. Um, that this this uh, athletic department achieved a lot of greatness, you know. We're looking at 135 years of total athletic competition, 32 national championships, 17 individual national champions, 307 conference champions, 326 individual conference champions. The list goes on. I mean, uh, there there's just a lot to take in and be proud of so you know when you know losing a colorado but it, that was just devastating um but you know don't let it ruin your day there's always things to be proud of you know look at volleyball and soccer which soccer just took a devastating loss today itself but not that not a bad loss either as the team they lost to is looking at top 25 as well. So, you know, and depending on how Gonzaga does against Texas, maybe they'll help keep us in the top 25 as well. So we'll get into that in a little more, um, you know, but yeah, the football game, you know, look at the, look at it this way. You know, we're looking at a lot of excitement, you know, in the athletic department alone. And it kind of depends what kind of fan are you are, you know, are you full blown Husker like me or are you just football and nothing else, you know, either way, you know, at least this university has a lot to be proud of, um, but a lot of exciting things to look forward to, uh, you know, you got volleyball, <laughs> of course, you know, soccer is looking good. Uh, winter sports, you know, basketball, uh, Keisei Tomonaga and company, uh, what are they going to do this year? You got, um, Rich Lovett, Peyton Robb, Silas Allred in the wrestling room, <laughs> uh, wrestling team's looking really good right now. Um, you know, you got Jordy Ball coming home, for, uh, for softball, uh, which this week actually, uh, the Huskers will have a intra-squad intra -squad scrimmage coming up, so we have a chance to look at her and see how she can affect this team greatly. Um, yeah, you got Justin St. Clair with a track and field team uh, looking up. So, you know, a lot to be proud of. Uh, but, you know, don't let this, you know, it, I just see the nastiest comments and, you know, yesterday I probably was harsh on Jeff Sims and, you know, that was a gut reaction, but, um, 
he is a human. He is a kid. Um, so, you know, I, it is what it is. I, I just hope he gets better and I hope he's okay. I know he got hurt there at the end of the game. So I, I certainly do hope he's okay. Um, but yeah, from there, we'll, uh, go from there. Um, it was announced earlier this week that, uh, basketball is going to have their opening night on the 29th with a show with DDG. I don't know who that is. You may not know him. I don't, I don't know, uh, kids and culture these days. I don't get it, but DDG will headline the showcase. Um, so yeah, we got a lot to be proud of there too. And I haven't really looked to see where Casey Tominaga is in the world stage, the FIBA competition. Is that over yet? I don't know. But um, anyway, without further ado, we'll we'll talk about that Minnesota game a little more now that we have a clear head. So after the football game, uh, I didn't really take kindly to Shadir Com. Uh, Shadir Sanders' comments about Matt Rule. Um, saying Matt Rule is saying all these things about Dion and uh, how he disrespected him, like standing on the midfield or whatever. I don't know. That, he's a drama queen, uh, first off. And at best, he's a okay quarterback. But I, he's to me, he's nothing. Uh he, he's not a dynamic QB. You know, he got, like, his 510 yards against TCU, you know, off of, you know, a bad defense. And then I don't know how many yards he threw against us. I guess I can pull up the stats real quick. But, uh, okay, he threw for 393 yards against us. A terrible Nebraska team. Uh, well... Let me back up for a second. Against a pretty good, solid Nebraska defense, okay? But um, I can't. I actually can't believe he did get 393. I didn't even think we got him past 300, but he did have a few lucky long balls there. But, you know, that as usual, defense played lights out, you know. They're up until the end when everybody pretty much just giving up, you know, and I can't blame them when you got a terrible offensive play, uh, and then you're on the field for the majority of the fourth quarter. I mean, you're going to get tired, bottom line, it don't matter how fit you are. Um, so yeah, garbage yards, whatever, you know, um, we were in this game the whole time, uh, bottom line, we were in it. Um, like I said, you know, the offensive mistakes, the turnovers, you know, when those happen, that that just takes a breath out of you, you know. Um, that, that pretty much sums it up, uh, you know. And that's all it was, was the turnovers. I mean, defense played really, really well. But the offense, they... It needs work. Um, on a positive side, though, we did finally get a glimpse of Billy Kemp and what he can do. He can make catches, and that's pretty crucial. That's something we learn. Is Billy Kemp can catch and make big plays. So, uh, great job by him this weekend. He uh, ended up getting 57 yards off of five catches. He was targeted seven times, so... Um, he looks like he's going to be our guy. Uh, I don't know why he didn't get looks last week against Minnesota, but, um, you know, I guess we'll never know. But uh, then you had uh, second on the team, uh, Nate Borker. He got 33 yards off of two targets. So, yeah, it's clear as day. Billy Kemp's our guy at the receiver spot. Um you know, Luke Reimer played a good game, too. You know, he uh, ended up getting how many tackles here? 
Uh, Luke Rummer got, well, he got four tackles. Uh, oh, our leading tackler of the game was Isaac Gifford, actually. Excuse me. Um, yeah, eight tackles. Uh, Luke Reimer did get four. Uh, and actually got a sack in there. One and a half sacks if you count the assists. Um, but yeah, we we actually got to Sadir San Sanders eight times. Uh, TCU didn't get to him at all. So night and day difference right there, you know. Um, yeah, and it, it's just frustrating, you know. Colorado is running off this high, winning two games in a row against bad teams, okay? We are a bad team. Sorry to put it out there, but we are. But, uh, you know, their time's coming. They're, they're not going to get anywhere this year, you know. They'll win maybe seven games. That's what I'm thinking. But, yeah, I, just ridiculous how the media is going about this Colorado. Oh, they're the best thing, you know. And then, make matters worse, Texas beat Alabama last night, which really so I don't like either team, but I hate Texas worse. <laughs> I I just I despise Texas, and y'all, I think, can agree on that. Uh, I mean, not that we care much about Alabama and Nick Saban either, but here soon Nick Saban will be, you know, in his beach house retired, and we won't have to deal with him anymore. But right now we got to deal with Dion, and my gosh. I am tired of it. And maybe one of these days Dion will go to Florida State or something. I don't know. Who knows? But all in all, you know, we uh, we we played a terrible offensive game. Uh, Jeff Sims, 106 yards passing. He was sacked twice. You know, I saw one of them. One of our guys. Actually, was following his assignment or whatever, and pulled this way, and the edge rusher was just going straight in. I mean, that there's nothing you can do about that. And another time was just a straight up blown, uh, missed block. I mean, the guy just blows right past him, and yeah. But you know, the one positive I will say is our offensive line is getting better. I can I can see it. You know, you may not see it, but I do. You know, and the conditioning is way more fantastic than years prior. So, you know, there there is positives in this whole thing. And uh, look at it this way. Next week, we finally get a home game in Lincoln. We can breathe and hopefully get a win against Northern Illinois, if anything else, and maybe... We can build something from there. It's really hard to build starting off on two road games. It really is. I mean, it, I I can't explain it, but, you know, you've got new coach starting off at his school, two road games. I mean, never even got to see your field memorial stadium on game day at all, and hopefully it shows up. I mean, because I know, I get it. People are tired of losing as much as I I'm I'm tired of it too. But reality is we are at rock bottom. And but the only good thing about that is we can go up. You know, uh, so we're just gonna have to look at getting better this whole year and just hope hope for the best you know and the people so people calling for Matt Rule get fired all right let me address this knock that shit off you know we're two games in all right obviously D and quit comparing Dion to Matt Rule and this and that all right we're doing it our way Colorado's doing it their way and in a few years I don't even think Colorado will even have Dion so Let's leave it at that, you know. I don't think Dion's gonna stick around there. You know, I could see Matt Rule sticking in Lincoln 
it, as long as he's successful, that is. But uh, we're building for the long term. Colorado's just trying to get instant success, all right? And, and the way they're doing about it is gaining media attention, having this flashy guy named Deion Sanders and whatever, and that ain't going to last. It never does. That shit never does. So, you know, we're, we're doing it for long term. They're, they're not. All right. So people, you know, we're, we're so divided right now. you got one group saying, oh, we should have got Dion, you know, Matt Rule sucks, but we need to fire him, you know. All I can say is stay patient. All right. I get it. It sucks. I am tired of it, too. I'm tired of losing. But... You know, we, we're looking back at his first years at Temple and Baylor, all right? And this is how his pattern works. He wins one or two games his first year. And then he slowly builds it up. So that's what it's looking like right now. And we're just going to have to trust that process, all right? That That's, that's what we got to fully expect, you know? We can still get six wins this season and make a bowl game that's kind of what we're hoping for anyway you know you know but i wouldn't uh doubt that we would only win two games or whatever that that's very possible too i mean it's gonna be a rough year so you know people calling for matt rule get fired and Saying how much he sucks, you know, knock that shit off, all right? Give it, we can start saying that after year three, all right? But right now, this is stupid. Knock that shit off. Let's give it three years, you know, and see where we're at, you know? And the good news is we can only get better. And that... I'm done talking about it. <laughs> I just, we, we just need to get along as a fan base. You know, when the players and the coaches watch us, stuff like this, you know, they, they, you know, they can feel down too. You know, if I'm sitting here slamming the coaches and talking about how much they suck and whatnot, you know, that can affect them. You know, I highly doubt any of them's watching this right now, but, you know, uh, there's plenty of other shows and social media and whatnot. People look at it. I don't highly recommend it, but they do. And that can affect a person. It actually pisses me off when I'm scrolling through comments during a game, you know. Uh, and I'm not even the one on the field. So, you know, take your negative bullshit elsewhere. You know, we don't need it, you know. As a fan base, we do need to get along. We need to find a way to get along and stick together, you know. Um, that's all there is to it. You know, the, this, uh, you know, saying, you ain't a real fan or whatnot. That, that shit just needs to stop, all right? We all have our different opinions. And I'm fine when somebody has an opinion. But you don't need to hate on somebody because they have a different opinion than you. That's pretty damn childish, and it splits everybody up. Just cut it out. So, anyway, I spoke my piece about that. Um, yeah. Uh, Gabe Urban, uh, he, got, he uh, ran the ball 17 times, got 82 yards. He only lost 8 yards of the whole thing. So, you know, that's one positive look at is... You know, we got a decent rushing game. We actually rushed for 267 yards on Colorado. So, to me, that's a win, you know. Air, um, that's actually about where I wanted to have it uh, statistically. Um, the one thing we failed at, though, is holding on the ball, you know, winning the time of possession and just making sure we have more points on the board. We lost that battle, and that was due to turnovers. Um, I, I believe that was the game plan going in, and everybody knew it. Uh, the bottom line is uh, we just did not know how to hold on the ball, and we failed that game plan. So um, we did a fine job, like the first few drives, 
but um, ultimately, you know, the, the snap ball hitting the runner in motion, that was obviously a shitty ordeal. And did it, I think it happened twice, uh, almost a third time. Uh, so obviously we got to work on um, plays like that when we have a runner in motion. You would think it's elementary to you know, signal a snap after the guy is past the center, but I don't know. <laughs> how, how do you do that? How do you fuck, how do you screw that up? Uh, is what I want to know. Uh, and then, you know, when the ball falls right in front of you, jump on it. All right. Uh, why are you like slowly trying to pick it up? Like, I don't get it. The ball was right in front of you. Fall on it. Uh, that's another thing. Like, piddly crap like that. You know? I mean, I was taught when I played little league football to just fall on the ball. So, you know, elementary stuff that just got to get mopped up. But, you know, whatever. We, we lost. Uh, and hopefully we can bounce back against Northern Illinois this weekend at home. Uh, God forbid. Um, it, it was just, uh, I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> but, yeah, Northern, Northern Illinois, then Louisiana Tech next, all right? Those should be two wins right there, y you would think. And then we got Michigan at, uh, right after that. So we need those two wins bad, especially before we go and play Michigan. Uh, hopefully that ain't like some big nationally televised game because we don't really need that negativity in our lives right now. So without further ado, I am done talking about football. Let's get to something more exciting, which is volleyball. So volleyball gets two impressive wins over the week. Uh, one against Creighton, our in-state rival, to win the state championship. And the next was against Long Beach State, who I thought was really going to give us a hard time. Um, being the team that uh, swept Texas away. Um but we ended up taking care of business in three sets and that. So uh, great week for volleyball um, as we prepare to play the number five team in the country on Tuesday, which is Stanford. So that that's going to really put us to the test there. Um, excuse me. <laughs> um, so anyway, talk about the volleyball game against Creighton on, uh, yeah, it was on Thursday. Um, blocking and kills were just absolutely incredible. Merritt Beeson and Harper Murray get just doing what they do best, and that, that's just killing balls. Uh, Andy Jackson as well is getting better at that. Um, that girl has a hell of a swing on her, and uh, if you notice, she'll get right over that net, like, when the um, she, she her armpits are like over the net, and then she just kills that ball. Like when it's a kill, it's a kill with her. Um, just absolutely incredible at that position. Uh, but anyway, that was one thing. Um, first, we dominated the first two sets of that game. Um, but then Creighton came back and uh, gave us fits in the third set. Um, uh, yeah, and I think that was due to our complacency. Um, you know, we felt too comfortable there in the third set, and I think we got a little complacent, and we started uh, causing errors, and um, yeah, uh, Creighton ended up winning that third set, which was our first set loss of the season, by the way. So that's not a bet. We were the only team to not lose a set all year during that game. So that's pretty incredible. Um, pretty incredible step to have, if you ask me. Uh, 
So team wise, we outscored Creighton sixty eight to forty seven. Uh, on kills, we beat them on that fifty two to forty two. Uh, we had six aces while they only had two. Uh, we were ten and three on blocks. Uh, we had forty nine assists. They had forty. Uh, we we uh, had forty seven digs in that game uh, to Creighton's forty one. Uh, in that game, our individual leaders, uh, when it comes to the kills, um, Merritt Beeson had seventeen. Lindsey Krause with twelve and. Lindsay Krause is incredible. Uh, she never really gets like the high statistics in the game, really. But she always has these runs where she's just dominating. Um, she's really fun to watch. Uh, I believe she's a sophomore this year, too. So she's getting better and better. Like this team, you know, they're, they're good. Uh... Let's see, Harper Murray, she had 10 kills. Um, let's see, Lanny Choboy had three aces in that game. Uh, Bergen Riley with two, Maisie Bozinger with one. Um, which we didn't see Maisie Bozinger in the second game against Long Beach State, so I wonder what that was all about. Um, we did, however, see, um, oh, what's her name? Dang it, I'm so bad with names. Um, it'll come back to me here eventually, but, um, let's see. Where was I going with this, guys? All right. So, okay, on blocks, uh, the one person who's been really doing good at this stat is Andy Jackson. Uh, there at the uh, block position. I, I'm bad with, is she a setter or is she an outside hitter? I can't really remember, but um, yeah, when she goes in for a block, she's been doing excellent at that. Her and uh, Lindsey Krause, when they're together, they're just absolutely dominant. Um, Lindsey Krause did get three blocks. Merritt Beeson got three as well. Uh, Bergen Riley with 42 assists. She's always good at that. Uh, let's see. On the digs, Lexi Rodriguez, of course, she did her thing that night. Got 14 digs. Uh, Bergen Riley, um, she, she don't play the libero position, but, uh, man, if she, but... I believe she could if she wanted to, but yeah, she ended up getting 11 digs herself, um, which was pretty incredible. So, same as Laney Choboy, them two, but for non liberos they get to the ball pretty quick. Uh, if Lexi ain't there, then one of them are. So that, we basically got three liberos if you think about it. I mean, they're really excellent at that. Um, but yeah, we ended up beating Creighton uh, three sets to one. So that keeps our undefeated streak alive. Um, then yesterday, uh, after the football game, I think our volleyball team has made us happier after the uh, Colorado loss by beating Long Beach State in a pretty dominating fashion. Um, I did write notes. I don't know if I'll really go through them because it was, it really wasn't even close. Not, and not even as close as I thought it'd be. Um, I really thought, I, uh, you know, you had Tyler Heldenbrandt, who previously was an assistant at Nebraska, uh, who's doing a pretty good job with Long Beach State. Um, in his own right, and he he was actually a player at Long Beach State, so he's actually coaching at his alma mater, um, which is really cool. I'm really happy for him. He's a pretty good guy, but um, like I said, I thought um, we were gonna have our hands full, but uh, we really didn't. I, we went out there and just absolutely dominated, and 
you know, the com commentators mention it and made me think, you know, we, we are playing better and better each game. Like we are, um, just looking really good. Um, but I have mentioned earlier, they beat, uh, number one, Texas earlier this year. I think Texas though has, uh, dropped to two and two last I saw that, that, record could have changed I don't know um oh yeah set one uh there was a huge save by Harper Murray like the ball like went right in the stands and we and she went, ran and uh did like this little diving that thing to get the ball back in play and that that was actually really cool like great hustle by Harper on that um and then um uh, not to mention uh i forgot to mention about laney choboy and her serving it's man she's really good and she had a string of like 11 serves um which is almost unheard of but yeah there is a t we had like a 12-0 run. I think it was in the second set we, when we ended up winning that one, like 25 to 8. I don't remember the last time we held a team to single digits in a set, but uh, that second set was dominating. Not even much to talk about because Laney was out there. Sir, she had like seven or 11 serves in a row, which. Uh, just basically put them away there in that second set. Um, oh, and in that second set, there were a, there was a sequence. Uh, yeah, it's when we were up five to two. There's uh, three major blocks in a row, one by one. Like we would block, the other team would bump set spike. We would block again, like three times in a row, like. And the fans went wild for that. I mean, just incredible. Um, and I think that involved Lindsey Krause, and I can't remember who else. I wish I could uh, write those things down, but I'd never think about it at the time. Um, yeah, 11-0 run when she was serving. Um, oh, there. It's one crazy statistic where we uh, were hitting 385 and they're hitting below 310. That's like unheard of. I if I heard that right, um, but it was minus something. Um, so that was freaking incredible. Uh, so set three, uh, Long Beach State did give us a testy set three, um, but at the end. Uh, what was it? We won like 25 to 18 or no, 25, to 21. And that said, we ended up pulling away there at the end. But, um, yeah, uh, the team statistics there, uh, we, uh, ended up getting 58 to their 32.5 points, uh, 46 to 25 on kills, three to one on aces. Uh, 9 to 6.5 on blocks, 41, 22 on assists, 33, 27 on digs. So we won all those battles. Um, and then the individual kills, Harper Murray, of course, she had the most of the night with 10. Andy Jackson, uh, that this is where she showed up, like one of her best games I've seen so far. And she had uh, eight kills herself. Um, Merritt Beeson had nine. I mean, Harper and Merritt's always up there duking it. I, I swear they have a competition, see who gets the most kills. But uh, that night it was Harper Murray. Um, we didn't get very many, or we only had three aces of the whole night. Um, one of them by Laney Choboy. Uh, then Bergen Riley and Merritt Beeson each had a ace on their serve. Andy Jackson had four blocks. Beck Alec with four. Harper Murray with three. Lindsey Krause with three. Merritt Beeson with three assists. Uh, Bergen Riley had 32. 
of course, she's always going to win that battle. Um, Laney Choboy with four, Lexi Rodriguez with three. Uh, Bergen Riley had eight digs. She had more dig. Yeah, she had more digs than Lil Nuggy. How about that? Uh, Merritt Beeson with eight, and Kennedy Orr with five. Um, and like I said, this team's getting better and better by each game. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't like to make a bold prediction, but uh, I don't know who's better right now. I mean, Wisconsin's clearly number one. That's because, you know, they beat us for the eight or for the past however many games was it 12 of them so you know if we can get over that wisconsin hump then you know i think we're in business but uh, we'll find out later uh this year um when we end up playing them see who's the better team and hopefully we come out on top i'm tired of losing to wisconsin we always in every sport we always have that one damn team that's a thorn in our side and Wisconsin's this one for volleyball. But, um, you know, great overall effort by the ladies. Um, can't say much more than they're just what they're winning. So uh, hopefully they keep that up. So um, from there, and I'm gonna check on the uh, score sheet here for the golf tournament that our men are in right now at the Knoxville Collegiate. I don't know if they're wrapping that up yet. I hope so for the sake of the show, but um, let me check real quick. So we started the golf tournament at the Knoxville Collegiate um, on Friday, I believe. Yeah, Friday. And um, it still ain't wrapped up yet. Our, uh, the Nebraska wrapped up their play, so hopefully nothing changes as I read where we're at at the moment. But right now it looks like uh, Gentry Sheave, he's tied for 13th. Reed Malik tied for 37th. Will Marshall tied for 53rd. Grant Jabinas tied for 53, and Harry Crockett tied for 59th. Uh, so our Top finisher, who is Gentry Sheave, who's one of the Big Ten golfers to watch this year. He uh, shot a 208, it looks like. Um, so, I don't know. Is that good or bad? I, uh, rating golf scores, you know, I'm used to, like, the 5 under, 6 under, you know, when it comes to, like, uh, the... 208, you know, I, I get a little lost. So hope, it, it's a learning experience for me. But um, I do understand it's a par 70 course. So, uh, yeah, wouldn't that be two under? Let me know in the comments if you know about golf. I, I think that would be two under, I would think. But, um, yeah, so... And it looks like team-wise, we're in ninth place out of 14 teams, which is pretty terrible. But um, what do you expect? It's got, we we never been a golf school. I mean, I, we had a few good golfers come through, but, um, you know, maybe it'll get better. You can hope. But, um, yeah. Men's golf, uh, right now sitting at ninth place. I think that's where they're going to stay. Uh, hopefully so, because I'm going to call it that, that we finished at ninth. So um, from there, uh, don't know. I mean, like the guy hits a ball, ball goes in hole. What, what more can you talk about when it comes to golf? Um, so anyway, that leaves me with uh, the soccer games. So, uh, damn it, was it Wednesday or Thursday? We had our game against Cal uh, Davis. And uh, at the time, De Eleanor Dale was tied for first uh, in the nation with the goal scored. So that was pretty awesome. Um, the only person uh, 
with her on that is Texas's Trinity Spears. So maybe they'll duke it out for the top scorer of the year. Um, hopefully Dale's on top of that. Um, but at the time, this was our hottest start since the year 2000. So that that's how good this team is. Uh, and I think 2000, we actually had a pretty good year that year. So, um, yeah, on that note, uh, Sarah Weber had the team high of eight shots. Another team high of four shots on goal. Tied with Eleanor Dale with two goals. Haley Peterson, Nicola Hawk. Uh, Nicola Halk, uh, Abby Schwartz, Sadie Waite, and all had one assist. Uh, Team-wise, we outshot Cal Davis 2013, uh, 13-27 with shots on goal, uh, 4-1 to with assists, but we also fouled, or outfouled them 19-8, which is Typical of Nebraska as we play aggressively, which is what I like that makes exciting soccer um, I, I love our aggressive play and I think that's why I love watching this team is because um, We're always constantly after the ball and it just makes exciting soccer so um, and defensively to, you know if, if there's one thing that defines the University of Nebraska, it's aggression, it's uh, hard nose, like duke it out type things when it comes to sports. I mean, and soccer is no different from that. Um, but anyway, um, so stat wise, like I said, yeah, we uh, outshot them 20. 13, uh, Samantha Halk had six saves during that game, so she did a fine job. Uh, missed one, though. Cal Davis did score a goal on us. Um, man, but we uh, had th their goalkeeper had her work cut out for her. She had to save the ball eight times and failed three times to get it, so... We ended up winning, no, sorry, four times. We ended up winning that four to one. Um, yeah, really wasn't that close as I thought it would be. Um, you know, UC Davis isn't a bad team at all. Uh, you know, like I said, typical for uh, um, California teams to uh, be a decent team. But uh, we took care of business. Um, but then uh, I just finished watching the game against St. Louis, and that's a different story to be told. What a heartbreaker. We ended up losing that 3-2 to two, uh, in the last minutes of the game. I would have been okay with a tie. That would have helped a lot, but uh, we ended up losing that 3-2. A, a team that beat us 5-1 to one last year, so... As you can see, we improved. Um, but St. Louis is a good team, and they're going to make the top 25 this year. We might be pushed out. Who knows? Hopefully not. I, I hope we stay in. And I think that kind of depends on how Gonzaga does against Texas today. They're they're playing right now. Gonzaga is number 23. Texas is number 17. So if uh, Gonzaga can come out on top of that, um, I think that would really help help us stay in the top 25 this week. I, I don't know for sure. I don't know how it works, but, uh, you know, we're still 6-1 and one, and 1. Um, so, you know, that, that's not a bad record to have uh, before our conference play. Uh, as we do play Wisconsin on Friday, we only have one game next week, so that'll help too. To, uh, we can breathe a little bit before we start conference play. Um, but yeah, it, it was a total heartbreaker. Uh, um, it, it all came down to a corner kick from uh, who the hell we play? St. Louis there at the end and they finally got one to lay in. And after we were duking it out there in the second half, First half went scoreless. I mean, the the ball was just going everywhere. Nobody had real clear possession. 
that whole first half. And then we started out the second half strong, and we looked like the better team that whole second half. Um, one of the scores uh, St. Louis got in was, eh, it was iffy, but, uh, but you know, th- they're at the end. They ended up uh, winning it 3-2 to two against us. I, I was, and that was, the last goal was, uh, that was with four minutes remaining, I think, maybe even less. But uh, they just had a clear opening and got that goal. And so, yeah, it was a total heartbreaker. It, it would have been nice to, if we could at least just tie that one. But, um, no, they they pushed through and got us there at the end. So, um, hopefully it don't uh, have our team hang their heads. Because uh, the big story right now is Eleanor Dale is the – nation leading scorer with the 12 right now. So that's pretty impressive to have. I don't know if Nebraska ever had like that top scorer in the nation before, because I think we're always based on defense, always defensive play, you know, but um, she's on top right now with 12 goals. Um, And I guess it kind of depends how Texas did, because she was, tied with that uh, girl from Texas, but uh, hopefully Gonzaga can pull through that one and help us uh, in the rankings there, Um, you know, but all in all, we're still safe uh, to possibly make the NCAA berth, Um, you know, and the good news is, I mean, we still have chances to prove ourselves against that number six team at the moment later on. So that can help if we can get a victory on that. And of course, uh, how far can we get in the big 10 this year? You know, we were picked to finish six. So, um, we can, uh, you know, have a good run in the big 10, like we did last year, that'll, do tremendous things, maybe just saying the hell with it and winning the whole thing, right? That would be awesome. So, um, yeah, tough loss there. I, I really hope, wish we would have got that, but um, maybe next time. Maybe we'll meet up again with them again next time. Who knows? But um, with that, guys, uh, let me show you what's on tap for next week. Uh, tomorrow, women's golf plays at the Sam Golden Invitational. Uh, I'm not quite sure where that's at. I will have to look. So I just had to pull up the article because um, I didn't write anything down about that. So um, I'm reading this from Huskers.com. So anyway, the Nebraska women's golf team tees off on its 2023 fall season when we travel to Corinth, Texas for the Sam Golden Invitational, and it looks like it's hosted by North Texas. The 12-team tournament gets underway on Monday, September 11th, with 36 holes, beginning with the shotgun start at 8.30 uh, a.m. Central Time at the Oakmont Country Club. The three-round tournament concludes with the final 18 holes on Tuesday, September 12th, with another shotgun start at 8.30 a.m., Uh, The 12 teams, which include BYU, Charlotte, Houston, Kennesaw State, Missouri, and Texas Tech, TCU, Tulane, Tulsa, UTSA, and of course the hosts from North Texas will face a 6,413-yard par 72 layout at the Oakmont Country Club. Live scoring for the five-count four tournament will be available through golfstat.com. Um, so there you go. Uh, the, our lineup will consist of Michaela Vavrova, and I'm going to butcher all these names because they're all difficult. Uh, but Michaela Vavrova, Arden Lushim, Miu Takahashi, Lena Hassert, Kel- and Kellyanne Strand, the easiest one. And as an independent, uh, Lindsay Deal. 
Um, but I've heard a lot of good things about Killian Strand. I, I mean, I understand golf, but I, I looked her up last year. I don't know what's great about her, but everybody is pumped for her. So I'm going to be pumped for her too. Um, but yeah, uh, apparently she's one of our top golfers right now. Um, so from there, uh, good luck to the ladies at the um, Invitational. Then on, let's see, okay, so Tuesday, it's the big one, a volleyball game against Stanford, which is at Stanford, so I'm a little uh, worried about this one. Are we going to continue our streak? Who knows? I don't know. But, you know, obviously this is going to really tell where we're at. Um, yeah, embrace it, Husker fans. Um, can't be scared to face these type of teams. You got to do it to, you know, move up in the world. Um, you know, and I think we can do it. I really can. It'll be testy. I bet it'll be a five setter. But um, I'm looking forward to that one. That's going to be a fun game. Grab your popcorn. It's going to be awesome. Um, so then on Thursday, we got softball, uh, inter-squad scrimmage. So that'll be a chance to uh, look, uh, get a chance to look at Jordy Ball and uh, how this team's going to look this year. So I'm pretty excited about that. That's, that's going to be awesome. Friday, we finally open up Big Ten playing soccer against Wisconsin. Um, who is a decent team? You know, the... A lot of the Big Ten teams this year look pretty decent in soccer, so it may not be as easy a road as I thought. Um, but yeah, there's three ranked teams in the Big Ten right now, us being one of them, Penn State and Northwestern. Um, and that depends if we drop out or not uh, after this week. We could because we're at 24. Um, hopefully not. Maybe Gonzaga saves us and keeps us in there. Uh, we'll see. But uh, we open up Big Ten play against Wisconsin. That should be a win. I mean, I don't know. It'll be a dog fight. It'll be a, just like football. It's going to be a dog fight to the end. Uh, I just feel it. Uh, Saturday, cross country. We'll tra travel to the green. No, well, not travel too far. Nebraska Wesleyan uh, for the Greeno Dixon Invitational. Um, yeah, so the men and women are going to look to build off their success off that. Uh, women went in the Augustana Twilight, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Uh, so we got that going for them. Uh, set. Of course, Saturday, you know, we finally have a game in Memorial Stadium as we take on Northern Illinois. Um, and they didn't, didn't really look too sharp uh, against uh, Southern Illinois this week. I watched some of that game. They were, I think they were down like 13, 17 at one point. I don't know if they crawled back and won that game, but, you know, you're playing Southern Illinois. I get it's a rival, but it's also an FCS school, so... Um, or are they rivals? Do they play annually? I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. To me, they didn't look too sharp from what I saw from them. It, it should be a win. I, I would hope. Um, obviously, if we don't win, the, win a team that struggles against Southern Illinois, then we've really got issues. Uh, but let's hope we uh, pull it off. So Sunday, and and to pull that off, we gotta hold on damn ball. <laughs> Bottom line, just ball security. I don't even care if we win seven nothing. Just hold on damn ball. Um. So with that Sunday, we got women's golf at the Mary Fossum Invitational. So this will already be their second uh, golf tournament, like within a week. So, um, 
Good luck to them. It'll be hosted by Michigan State. That's about all I know about that. And then Sunday, we got volleyball against Kentucky, who is also going to be a pretty solid team. They're not as good as they were last year by far, um, but they're going to be a pretty salty team against us. So, um, yeah, I got a pretty busy week for Husker Athletics. And um, as always, I hope we win every single thing we got going on here. So um, with that, guys, I'm going to wrap this show up. Uh, it's a pretty shorter show than usual, but, um, yeah, it's kind of hard to talk about things when you lose. Um, but, you know, look on the bright side of things. We, we do got good stuff going on, you know. Um, uh, we, you know, we still, we're not even in the winter yet, you know, we just started. So, uh, let's see where we go from here. Um, you know, uh, the weather's finally cooling off. So, you know what, I'm look, I'm hoping I get to pull up the old black stone. It's been too hot to grill or anything. I'll be brutally honest. Uh, you know, a lot of people like to like summer because they think that's time to grill and shit. But for me, it's the fall. That's that's when I'd like to go camp, and that's when I'd like to go grill and do stuff. It's the fall. That that's my weather. I'm a fat guy, so um, that's when I like to do things. You know, but um, yeah, the weather's cooling off. It's gonna be a great week of work for me because you know being outside and and the cooler temperatures, I embrace that. Uh, not when it's negative 30, though. I'll bitch about that. But, you know, fall, cake. I love it. But, um, yeah, guys, uh, let's be good to each other. Let's not be shitty fans. Let's, you know, embrace what we got. Um, I, I get it. Football's tough right now. Um, we're all tired of it, you know. We all have our different opinions, and that's okay. You can have your opinions and whatnot, uh, but just don't be shitty each other. Have a different opinion and move on. Simple as that. Um, you don't have to be pissy with somebody when they have a different opinion. It, it about gets sickening, you know, seeing people do that kind of shit, you know. It, either... Try to look at the positives or kick rocks. Like, I don't got time for people like you, you know? Just look in the bright side of things. Like, look for something positive. So football sucks. Okay. Does it really affect you and who you are as a person? Not really, you know? Um, but as much surprising as that sounds, you know, like... Just be a decent human. We can have a shitty football team, but it doesn't mean you have to be a shitty human either. So, you know, let's let's be good to each other. Anyways, guys, I hope to see you again. Please like, share, and subscribe uh, if you like what you're watching. If you don't, then move on. But uh, hopefully uh, we pick up the pace in some of these sports. Hopefully soccer gets a win, uh, football gets a win, well, all of them, but you know what I mean. Hopefully uh, we cover some ground here and um, uh, start kicking some ass. Anyways, guys, go Big Red.